Hello, dear friends, a very good morning. And may the Holy Spirit enlighten the understanding, the understanding of all of you, so that all of you, all of us, may know what is His good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for our lives. God is Father, and the Father takes pleasure in guiding, leading our thoughts in order for His children to be able to make the right choices for their life. Do you know what this means? It's, it means that if you truly have the direction of the Holy Spirit, then every choice that you, you make, it will be like you won the lottery by yourself. <laughs> because you got it right and everything is going to work out well because you know, I know, we know that everything that we sow, we are going to reap. There is no other way. Whether it's with love or without love, with hatred or without it, it doesn't matter. If you sow, you are going to reap. It's a fixed law that God established on earth. Everything that a man sows, that he will also reap. So, if you have the Spirit of God leading your thoughts, Will you sow? Will you sow anything bad? No. You are going to do the best that you can. And obviously, consequently, you are going to harvest the best. So it only depends on you. This is a right, a privilege that God gives us in order for us to be able to make the right choices for our lives. Because if we make the wrong choices, then we are going to suffer because of that. And there is no other way to resolve it. You have to reap it. So it's pointless to be religious, charitable, a good person. None of this works. If you sow, you will reap. So why not ask or rely on the help of the Holy Spirit to conduct our thoughts, isn't it? Very well. I would like to speak to you today about what God has given us, especially yesterday. I wanted to speak to you firsthand. The Bible says that the peace of God should be the ruler or the one conducting our hearts. How great this word is. And let the peace of God rule in your heart to which you were also called in one body which is the body of the Lord Jesus, which is the blameless church of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the body, and He is the head. So, let this peace of God rule our heart. Therefore, those who are part of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, and of His church, His blameless church, which is the kingdom of God. It's the kingdom of God. Anyone who enters the kingdom of God is part of the church, the invisible church, the church, not the institutional one, but the spiritual one. This spiritual church, the head is Jesus. He is the one who guides, who leads his church through his Holy Spirit.
So let the peace, the peace rule, let peace rule in our hearts because the heart, unfortunately, is difficult to dominate. It is cruel. It's the soul, right? It's the soul that is ambitious and selfish, self-centered, vain, that always, always wants to feel and receive. It's always available to receive, but never to give. The heart's like this. God Himself said that the heart is deceitful. The heart is deceitful and it's cruel. It is cruel. And obviously, when this heart is controlled by men, by the person themselves, then, by the way, the one that actually dominates the person is the heart and not the other way around. Instead of the spirit dominating the heart, which is the soul, usually it's the soul that dominates, that imposes its will to the spirit. Meaning that the heart is the one that imposes its will to the mind. And that's why the world suffers and people suffer. And they suffer and suffer and suffer. And as long as this heart is not circumcised, it's not a new heart and humble and submissive to the Spirit of God, then this heart will not have peace. Peace, peace that comes from God is eternal. However, if we are not careful to make sure that our heart is submissive to His Word and obey His voice and follow His laws and live away from sin, then the heart will not have peace. Because sin, sin stains the conscience. Sin hurts the conscience, and as long as the conscience, as long as the conscience is stained and guilty, as long as a person's conscience is feeling guilty, then the heart will not have peace. So many people even say, oh, I would like to have peace, even if it's just one minute of peace, I don't have it at home, at work, wherever I go, I have no peace. So the person has this internal daily conflict. It's depression, right? People who are depressed are like this. They are downcast. Why? Because there is guilt. And there is guilt constantly there in, in that conscience. And the heart obviously feels that. He has no peace. There is no peace as long as there is no forgiveness. So, let alone will there be forgiveness without repentance. So, one thing leads to the other. And that's how things should work. That's how it works. When a person has their heart full of peace, then they are well in their faith. They are okay with God because in the heart, it's where you can see and check whether the person is okay or not in their relationship with God. This is it. Because the heart, when it is guilty, when the person is guilty, when the person feels guilty, their conscience feels accused, then the heart has no peace. It becomes agitated from one side to another. But when a person 
For example, just as an example, when a person that comes to church, for example, you that have been and lived in sin, we who lived in sin, who were born in sin, and that one day we gave our lives to Jesus, we repented, and we were forgiven, what happened? The first thing that happened was that we received peace. You've seen testimonies of people who say, Oh, the day I received the Holy Spirit, oh, it was like heaven on earth. Actually, it was heaven inside of me. Such a joy, such a joy that I can't even describe without measure. Why? Because there was peace. When the heart is clean, when there is no accusation, then it's at peace. The heart is at peace. And that's why that Jesus said, forgive, forgive and you shall be forgiven. When we forgive those who hurt us, there is no guilt in our conscience, in our intellect, in our reasoning. We are free. We are free. So, the heart receives peace. When God forgives after the person repents, sincerely repents, then they receive peace. On the outside, there might be a war. They can face struggles. They might be armed with the armor of God and fight against the entire hell. But within them, there is peace. And this has to happen with you, dear friend. If you still, it's pointless for you to say like this, Oh, I already received the Holy Spirit, I have the Holy Spirit, and you speak in tongues. Peace, true peace, is the judge within you. It has to rule within you. If it doesn't rule within you, if there is no peace within you, then you know that you don't have the Holy Spirit. You know that. You are aware of it because you have no peace. Peace is the thermometer to see if you are okay or not with God. If you believe or not in what we are saying, it's not me, it's the Word of God. It's what the text says here. And let the peace of God, not the peace of the world, it's not a fleeting peace, no, it's an eternal peace from God. And let the peace of God rule in your heart to which you were also called, meaning that we were called for peace, to live at peace, to have peace within ourselves and peace before God, in one body, meaning in the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the church, the blameless church, the perfect and holy, pure church, which is the church whose head is our Lord Jesus Christ. So, this peace which is in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ cannot be touched. If by any chance a church member of the body of Jesus is unwell, then he will leave the body. He doesn't stay in the body because he doesn't feel well when he is with peace because he's dirty. He's rot. He's rottening. So God's not going to allow them to stay. So the church of the Lord Jesus is perfect. It's blameless. It's the bride that is pure and virgin, cleansed, 
that God has kept, has allowed to stay here in this world in order to add more people to the church that will be washed in the blood of Jesus and then be added to the body, which is the church. So, let this peace, the peace of God, be the judge in your heart. Because if there is anything wrong, straight away, the peace will say, whoa, something is not right, I don't accept this. I don't accept this. Peace doesn't accept it. Any dirt and unrighteousness, any, anything wrong. And this is personal. This is individual. When a person is at peace, it's them with them alone and God. It's pointless for the person to want to want to justify themselves by their flaws and failures. No. Peace, the lack of peace within them is already saying, you are guilty. You are guilty. You are guilty. You have to resolve this problem with God. And if the person doesn't resolve it, then there is no peace within them. And this is the reason why so many people believe in Jesus believe in the Bible, they are evangelicals, they are from the church, and so on and so forth. However, their countenance is fallen. They are prostrated. It's that countenance that is sad. Why? Because their soul is crying. Their soul is groaning because they have no peace. Meaning, when there is peace, then the soul is happy. When there is no peace, the soul is sad. When the soul is sad, then it's pointless to put makeup on, put a lot of makeup, the most perfect makeup, or, or get a plastic surgery done, take here and add there. It's pointless because the eyes, the eyes, as far as I know, there is no surgery to the eyes. Either you have a divine look or you have a worldly look because the eyes are the lamp of the soul. And if they are dull, it's because the soul is ill, it's sick. So you may have a beautiful, smooth skin, wonderful, beautiful, but if your heart is unwell and there is no peace in you, then your eyes will show, it will report you and say that indeed you are not well. So, the Apostle, guided by the Holy Spirit, says, let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which also you are called in one body, which is the church, and be thankful. So, the peace has to rule, reign in your hearts. Meditate on this text, dear friend, and find out for yourself. The Holy Spirit will guide you get the spirit of this word because when the heart is not well only the person can resolve it with God with God there is no one that can resolve it's them with God God is the Lord of peace and he gives peace to those who are with him, those who live with him, they have communion with him. Keep that. So, let me tell you just a bit. If my conscience, in practical terms, if there is anything accusing my conscience, the world accuses me. 
the world throws stone at me. The world wants me to die and that everyone will find out. I know that the world hates me. There's no problem. However, what rules in my heart is peace. If I am at peace with myself and above all with God, nothing will touch me, nothing will harm me, nothing will affect me. And this is the same with you. You may face the entire hell, but you're going to remain standing because the peace of God is there inside of you or not. Only you know. May God bless you all and until then, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God.